Welcome to tutorial number two. Um, today we're going to be going over Unity Basics and how we can work inside the program to start making our levels. So let's jump right in. Okay, jumping into Unity here, I'm going to go to File and New Scene and I'm going to discard whatever I had. So now I'm in a brand new scene just like you will be when you jump into Unity inside of your project file. Now there's a few important things we need to note here. Um, this hierarchy on the left, this contains a list of all the objects that are currently inside of our level. And Unity automatically puts in a main camera and a directional light. We don't need either one of these. So I'm going to hold control, select them both and just hit delete because they're objects we don't need. What we do need is the level object that the Human Fall Flat workshop package has provided us. So I'm gonna scroll down here on the left, click on the workshop folder, the prefabs folder, and then I'm gonna take this level object and I'm gonna drag it right into my hierarchy over here on the left to drop it. And now we have all the objects we need inside of our level to get started. Now you'll notice this level object has a little gray arrow next to it that means that we can expand this. I can see we have a spawn point, a fall trigger, a pass trigger, and a directional light. Now in the next tutorial, I'm gonna go over what all of these level mechanics do and why they're there. But for now, what you need to know is that every single object you put in your scene, it needs to go into the level object in order for your level to be able to be exported to the Human Fall Flat game. So I'm gonna scroll back to the workshop folder, go to the prefabs folder, and I'm just gonna pick something random from the lobby. I'm gonna put a bowling ball and a bowling pin and a bowling pin, right? I'm starting to build my level. Now these, because they're not inside the level object right now, if I collapse a level, you can see my level is not gonna work. So I need to select these all and then just click and drag and put them inside the level object just like that. Now I'm gonna go over the tools we can use in Unity to manipulate these objects. The first one we use is called the move tool here in the top left hand corner. So I'm gonna select the move tool and then I'm gonna come and click on one of these bowling pins. And you can see because I have the move tool selected, I have these three arrows that I can move the bowling pin however I want around. And you'll notice it's not just the arrows I can use, I can select these squares as well, and the top square lets me move it anywhere like that. You can experiment around with these to see what the different squares do. But this lets me move my object around my scene. The second tool is the rotate tool. So I'm gonna select that, and you can see it gives me a green line, a blue line, and a red line and these allow me to rotate the object along the different axes, just like this. So that's me to move it like that. The third tool is called the scale tool. So if I select that one, I can now use these boxes to scale up or down my object in any dimension that I want to, just like that. And if you wanna just make the object bigger in every dimension, you can click the white cube in the middle and scale it up or down just like that. So those will be good to experiment with there. Now there are two more tools, but I rarely use them. Um, the first one is the rect tool, which gives me um, corners that I can manipulate. Um, I typically prefer the scale tool to this one. And then there's this one tool that allows me to do everything at once. Um, move, scale, and rotate, depending on where I click um, when the tool's shown itself, okay? And then just like in every other Windows program, Control-Z, it will undo all of these manipulations that I've done to this object. So those are the tools we can use to move our object around our scene. Now there are a few controls that are important to know to know how to move around your scene and view all the objects you've placed. Um, scrolling your mouse wheel up and scrolling it down can zoom you in and out. So that's the one I use a lot. If I right click inside of my scene, I can rotate around and I can change my view. 
And then if I middle click inside of my scene, I, I can drag and I can change where my camera is. Now the easiest way to move to a certain object is to find what you wanna look at in the hierarchy and then double click it. So if I wanna look at the bowling ball, I'm gonna double click it and it zooms me in real nice with my camera centered on the bowling ball. And then for the bowling pin or the second bowling pin, etc. That's usually how I move around my scene is by double clicking on objects in the hierarchy and then zooming in, zooming out and using my right click and my middle click to move. Now when I've clicked on this bowling pin, on the right hand of the screen, you're gonna notice there's a lot of components that you can see. Now in future videos, I'm gonna go into specifically what each one of these does, but for now, let's just look at the transform component right here. It has the position of the object, the rotation of the object, and the scale of the object. So right now, I can come to the position and I can hit zero, zero, zero. And then by double clicking on the bowling pin, I can know that right now it's in the very, very center of my scene. And then if I want it to be exactly twice as big, I can hit two, two, two on the scale. And now this bowling pin is exactly twice as big as it used to be. Now, if I want to do an exact rotation on the object, instead of using the rotate tool, which can be somewhat inexact, I can come to the rotate part of the transform object and I can rot it, rotate it exactly 180 degrees. So right now the X is at negative 90. If I change that to positive 90, you can see my bowling pin is now upside down because I rotated it 180 degrees. So you can use this transform tool to manipulate a lot of your objects. Now I've gone and set up a little scene here. This could be the start of a level using prefabs from the mansion folder. Now looking in my hierarchy here on the left, you can see it's starting to get a little bit messy. And if I wanted to select this tree, I wouldn't necessarily know where to look. So one of the most important lessons I can teach you in level creating is to make sure you keep your hierarchy very organized and easy to manage. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the level object and hit create empty. So this creates an empty level object, which is basically an object in my scene that doesn't have anything in it. It's just empty and I can use it to organize my level. So I'm going to come over here above the transform component, highlight where it says game object, and I'm going to type island one. And so this will contain all of the objects I have in this first island in my level. Now I can come over to the hierarchy, click the top object, hold shift, and click the bottom object, which selects them all, and then drag them into the island object so that now they are all part of this island. And I can move them as one, I can rotate them as one, and I can scale them as one object. But more importantly, when I get down the line and I have 20 islands in my level and it's become a really big thing, um, keeping it organized like this um, by part so that it's much easier to find the islands can be very, very vital to having successful level creation. For example, um, what if I wanted to create a level that had just a lot of pillars in it? I can hold control and I can select these trees, I can hit delete, and then I can select my columns or my pillars over here. And by hitting control C, control V, I have now pasted a copy and I can move those to the other side. And now, um, inside this island, I can hit create empty. And in this new object, I can either click on it here or up there. I can name this pillars. And then I can put all my columns inside of there so that these columns are now an object of their own inside of the island. So that if I want to make them larger, I can go to the scale and I can scale just the pillars to this island. Or if I want them to be, if I want there to be more columns, 
control C, control V. Now there's two pillars and I can go like that. And then I can copy the floor just like I did with the pillars. And so you can see copying and pasting and grouping your objects in the hierarchy can make your job just so much easier when you're trying to make more complicated scenes with repeating um, instances of objects in it. And you can see that if I had the pillars and everything all expanded, it's starting to look messy again, but by keeping everything collapsed, I can keep my hierarchy very organized um, despite, you know, eventually having lots of objects throughout my level. I can go crazy here and put <laughs> all these objects, rows of pillars and fences and floor tiles, which if I had expanded all these, it would just look like a messy disaster and I wouldn't know what to do in my hierarchy. But because I have them organized inside those empty game objects, um, life is gonna be just a, so much easier for me. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you in this tutorial is this tool in the top right hand corner of your scene. This will help you view your scene a lot easier once you learn how to master this tool. Um, to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna delete all the extra islands I have and I'm just gonna focus on this first one that we started with. Now, if I hit the Y arrow, the green one at the top, I can now view this top down, which helps a lot when I want to um, make sure stuff is lined up correctly next to each other. And then I can just use these other arrows to change my perspective in the scene. Like if these pillars were a little bit off, um, I can come to this perspective, zoom really far in, and then make sure that they're all lined up exactly with each other. Just like that, there. Now that's how I can use that to line stuff up. Um, the other button in that top right hand corner that's important to know is this button right here that changes it from ISO to perspective. Um, perspective just means it adds depth to things. So if I'm looking at it from this corner with perspective, I can have the depth of looking down this hallway of pillars. But as soon as I change it to ISO, um, there's no more depth and it's easier to line stuff up. So ISO is not how the players see it. It's just a useful tool for you to straighten up your scene. Um, perspective is a more realistic view for what the players see. And again, you can see the X, the Y, etc using this tool to change your view. Um, clicking this cube in the middle of the tool, that also changes it from ISO to perspective. So that finishes up our second tutorial. Um, our next tutorial will start looking at the spawn point, the fall trigger, the pass trigger, the directional light, and these other components inside of the objects, um, getting you another step closer to publishing your first human fall flat level. So stay tuned.